Galatians chapter 5. And I'm looking around and I notice that there's some people that look like it's kind of warm in here. Would you want me to turn a fan on? Would that help? I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Okay, I'll do that real quick. Time out. All right. That'll be a blessing to us, I believe. Get some air moving in here. I wonder if Brother Larry's following me on the camera right now. That would be... <laughs> this guy does it all, you know? All right. Galatians chapter 5. We're going through the fruit of the Spirit. Let's read... Uh, by the way, that's on page 1006, if you have the Pew Bible there in front of you. Galatians chapter 5 is found on page 1006. If you didn't bring one with you or forgot it, we've got you covered there, so take that out. Galatians chapter 5, page 1006, and we're going to begin reading, uh, we're going to read verses 22 and 23 this morning about the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit. When one is being led by the Spirit, these virtues found in verses 22 and 23 will flow freely from one who is being led by the Spirit. Let's note that the Bible here in verses 22 and 23, it does not say the fruits of the Spirit. It's not a plural it does not say the fruit of the Spirit are. It says the fruit of the Spirit is. It's not a one or the other type thing. You don't have one of these and not the other. If you're truly born again, and the Holy Spirit of God lives within you, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit of God lives within you, these fruits are in you. This set of virtues and attributes are in you because the Holy Spirit is in you. All of these will be manifested by the Spirit-led believer. Because the fruit of the Spirit is the work of the Spirit. It's not our work, it's His work. And it will flow from a person who's led by the Spirit. Today we're going to look at the fruit of the Spirit of joy. Joy. It says, the, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Shall we pray this morning? Our Father, we thank You for another opportunity uh, to be in your word, Lord, and, and we've enjoyed ourselves already here in your presence and with one another. But Lord, we come now to the preaching of your word. We've come to the time, Lord, where we ask that you would especially speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray as your speaker, as your messenger today, God, that you would empty me of sin and self. And Lord, that you would fill me with thy spirit. Lord, I ask that you would... Um, Use me today to get your message to your people. Lord, we came today not to hear from a man, but to hear from you and to hear from your word. And I pray that you would do just that, that your word would make a difference in hearts all throughout the auditorium today. Lord, let us be open to you. Let us be ready to receive your word today. And Lord, we ask that you'd help us to be humble enough and obedient enough to act on your word today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Joy is an undaunted, positive contentment that flows freely from someone who is led by the Spirit. This morning, a question we can ask ourselves is this. Would those I spend most of my time with say that joy flows freely from me? Today, we're going to see the effects of one who is led by the Spirit of God and exhibits the joy of being in Christ. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. If you get to Psalms, it's just a few books before Psalms. Nehemiah chapter 8 can be found on page 459, 459 in the Pew Bible, page 459, Nehemiah chapter 8, the background to the verse we're going to look at here, which is verse 10, the background is God's people have 
come to a place now where they've been without the law for quite a while. They haven't had the reading of the law of Moses publicly for a long time. And they're coming to read the law out loud together to all the people, to all of God's people. All the people stand as the word is read. And the word is read and we see in verse 7 it says, And the Levites caused the people to understand the law and the people stood in their place. And so they read the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. You see, what they did that day was they didn't just read the word, they applied the word. And so as these people heard this word of God and it came alive to them that day, they became saddened in their hearts. They were weeping. They were heartbroken because of the fact that it's been such a long time since they've actually heard the Word and heard it explained like this. And it broke their hearts that they had been away from God's Word for so long. But then they get some instruction in verse 10. Nehemiah 8.10 says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. These people were saddened because it had been so long and it broke their hearts that they had neglected it. But what they said unto them is this is a holy day. This is a special day. The word is alive to us again. Don't be sad because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And they wanted them to have joy in their hearts because of the word of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning, the Bible says. And all through those times of sadness that we may come to, and even sometimes our own causes of things that we do that bring heaviness to our souls and to our lives, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord can be our strength in those hard times. We're talking about a real joy that overcomes sadness. The joy, of their Lord, the joy of the Lord was their strength to overcome their weeping. It's joy of the Lord. It can only come from God. And it's through His Spirit. You know, as I think of these last days, as I think of somebody who has exhibited the joy of the Lord... For those of you that know her, you would know that Penny Foster exhibited the joy of the Lord. She had a battle with ALS. And it didn't last very long. And as she began to deteriorate more and more, her joy never left. If anybody had a reason from our perspective to be miserable in their spirit, it was Penny. Penny. But every time we saw that lady, she always had a smile on her face. In fact, at her funeral services, her son told me that the day that she passed on to heaven, when he looked at her, she still had a smile on her face. In the midst of that miserable battle in her life, Penny had the joy of the Lord, and it was her strength. That's real joy. Folks, that joy did not come from Penny Foster. As much as she would have wanted to, she couldn't have conjured that up. That joy came from the Holy Spirit of God that was in Penny. The fact of the matter is this morning, Penny had more joy in her failing health than many this morning in this auditorium have in our ideal circumstances. Because we rely on the things around us to make us happy. And sometimes they do. But we know in life sometimes they don't. And the question is, as a believer in Jesus, am I going to be led by the Spirit of God enough that I can have joy in the midst of my hard hardships? I'm not saying this about Penny this morning to draw attention to an individual. I'm saying this to give us an example of the fruit of the Spirit. If you want to see a real example, if you want to look back and notice an example of the joy of the Lord, you could have seen it in Penny Foster. That's what it looks like in an individual. The fruit of the Spirit of joy comes from God. And this type of joy is like the type of love that we talked about last week. It's irrespective of our circumstances. 
It doesn't matter what's going on around us. We can have joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Would those I spend most of my time with say that it flows freely from me? If you would, turn in your Bibles now to Psalm chapter 16. Psalm 16. You'll just go to the right, just a few books there. Psalm 16 can be found on page 505 in the Pew Bible, page 505, Psalm 16. We see that the joy of the Lord is our strength. There's joy flowing freely from us this morning. Are we led by His Spirit? Next, Psalm 1611. Psalm 1611, the Bible says, Thou wilt shew me the, the, the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The Bible says in Psalm 1611, In thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy presence, in the presence of God, is fullness of joy. We're not going to be able to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit if we're not walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit, you say, what in the world does it mean to walk in the Spirit? I believe the best definition of walking in the Spirit is a verse that many of us know. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. If you want a, a definition of the Spirit-filled life, I believe it's found right there. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 3, 6. The spirit-filled life is acknowledging God in all your ways, practicing the presence of God. And when we acknowledge God in all of our ways, and we're walking in the spirit of God, we can have joy. And especially when we're in the presence of God, the Bible says there is fullness of joy. Listen, all those who've been in God's presence, hey, you can testify this morning. In fact, if I said, hey, anybody who's been in the presence of God and it's been joy, would you raise your hand? Their hands would go up all over the auditorium this morning as a testimony saying, I've been in God's presence and I know that in God's presence, even when the things around me are wrong, when I'm with God, there's joy. And I know that we can testify of that today. But friend, let me tell you, if you don't know Jesus today, if you're not born again, if you're not sure that heaven would be your home, listen, the best you're going to get is your circumstances. And we know that those let us down. But did you know today that there's a free gift? It's the gift of God. It's eternal life through Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He, he was buried and He rose again so that we could have eternal life. And when you trust Jesus as your Savior, He comes to dwell in you in the form of His Holy Spirit. And friend, no matter what happens in your life, you can have joy because in His presence... Not just a little bit of joy. It's fullness of joy. Don't you long for real joy today? Don't you long for joy that goes beyond our circumstances? Goes beyond those big things that are over our heads right now, the, the things that are weighing us down, you know? The things that weigh our spirit and, and crush us to, to the ground sometimes. Don't you want a joy that can persevere through that? Don't you want something that will lift that up? You know you can have it in Jesus Christ. Joy. In His presence is fullness of joy. You know, I, I wonder sometimes as Brother Tim leads the congregational singing, every once in a while he'll remind us to smile, won't he? He'll say, smile or smile as you fellowship. And I wonder why he has to remind us from time to time to smile. I mean, think about it. We're saved. If you're born again, you got Jesus. You're going to heaven. That's something to be excited about. That's something to smile about. And if you have joy in your heart and you have God's Spirit leading you, you can have a smile on your face. And you can smile through those songs. Life's not always hunky-dory. I don't know what that means, but I've heard it said a lot. And I think hunky-dory means good stuff. I don't know. If you know what it is, tell me after the service. I'd love to know. But life's not always hunky-dory. But we can be in the presence of our Creator. We can spend time with God Almighty who loved us and gave himself for us. And friend, that will change our attitude. You want to have a good day started off in the word and prayer. You want to have a good day, start your day off reading the word and in prayer. Is everything around you going to be great? Nah, but everything in you will. Everything in you will be just fine. Hey, we need to get God every day. We need to get with God every day. We need to be in His presence every day. And when I'm in His presence, the Bible says, there is fullness 
of joy. I want that today, and we can have it by just being in His presence. You know, joy is an undaunted, positive contentment that flows freely from someone who's led by the Spirit. I wonder today if the people that I spend most of my time with would say, joy flows freely from Him. I wonder today. Finally, if you would, turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. Our last point this morning, Luke chapter 10. Page 888 in the Pew Bible. Page 888. Luke chapter 10. Page 888, Luke chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 1, and then we're going to skip over to verse 17. Luke 10, 1. And after these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Jesus had twelve disciples, but at this point he sends two groups of thirty-five men, two by two. Two by two, he sends out 70 men, 35 groups. They go out, and they go out to preach the gospel of the kingdom. They go out, and they're healing, and they go out, and they're casting out devils. And they go out, and they're waging spiritual warfare. Jesus sends them out to do spiritual warfare. These are the 70 that he has sent. Let's look what happens when they return. Verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord... Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Verse 21, in that hour Jesus rejoiced in his spirit. We'll stop there. Jesus sent these men out and he gave them special powers and abilities at this time. And they came back and they were bringing back the good report. They had joy, the Bible says. They were excited. They said, listen, Lord, even the devils are subject. When we say your name, they go away. And Jesus says, I beheld Satan falling as lightning. Jesus said, look, I saw the spiritual warfare and you were winning. You were doing a great job. You were bringing down all the powers of hell. And, and, and we, were, we were waging a good spiritual warfare, Jesus says. And he says, I've given you all kinds of powers. I've done great, great things for you. I've given you all these things you can do on earth. He said, but all those things is not why I want you to rejoice. He says, I want you to rejoice, and you should rejoice, not because of the things you can do, but because your names are written in heaven. And friend, if your name is written in heaven in the Lamb's book of life, that means you have eternal life. And that is a reason to rejoice this morning. That is a reason to have joy today. And as these people came back, these men came back, they were, Lord, that's awesome. You should have seen it. And they were pumped about what they did. And Jesus said, that's great, fellas. I love it. But rejoice because your name is written in heaven. You know, this teaches me two things. Because Jesus rejoiced in his spirit. Number one, it teaches me that there's joy in serving Jesus. Do you know that this morning? There is joy in serving Jesus. You might get tired of me talking about this, but as we've been able to go to the Ronald McDonald house, it's become one of my favorite things. I've only done it two times, and I'm chomping at the bit for the next time. Every fifth Tuesday... We're going to go to the Ronald McDonald House and serve supper. And I encourage you. If you're having a tough time, you say, Brother Keller, I just don't know if I could go. Things are bad. That's when you need to go. Trust me on this. That's when you need to go. Because there's joy in serving Jesus. You say, hey, you're serving a meal. You're cooking some hamburgers. Stephen cooked, I watched. You're flipping hamburgers. 
And, and then you serve them hamburgers and, 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 and hot dogs and chips and some, some drinks. And you clean up the dishes and you go home. How is that serving Jesus? Hey, when you've done it unto the least of these, those that cannot help you, Jesus says, you've done it unto me. And I'm talking about people who are in the depths of despair with the health of their children, who wonder if their child's going to pull through. And you can see it in their eyes. They have a need in their heart. And they have a need in their life. And they have a need for their child. And I've not had one of them turn away prayer, by the way. Every one of them, when I say, can I pray for your child? Oh, absolutely, please do. Hey, that's that spiritual work, friend. Yeah, we're serving hamburgers. We're taking care of their physical needs. But there's a deeper meaning there. There's a deeper service there. When they see the joy of the Lord in somebody, and they see somebody who cares about them, listen, that is the work of God. Praying for people. Telling them, I love you. I'll be praying for your daughter or your son. And you take their name down. And you take their age down. And the tears come to your eyes as you think about the situations that mom and dad are going back to in the room. And you fall on your knees and you ask God to help them. Hey, that's work. That's serving God. And friend, let me tell you something. There is joy in serving Jesus. Oh, I wish those Christians who just pulled up a pew every Sunday and maybe put a little something in the plate would get up on their feet and get into serving Jesus. Because friend, if you want to get over your problems, there's joy in serving Jesus this morning. You say, Brother Kelly, your face is red. I know, and it hurts. <laughs> but I'm excited this morning. There's joy in serving Jesus. You want to get out of the molly grubs? I don't know what that means either, but it's bad. You want to get out of the molly grubs? Serve Jesus! And there's joy in serving Jesus. Hey, not only did the disciples joy, but Jesus rejoiced in his spirit as well. And finally this morning, it's said rejoice not in all the things that you can do, guys, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Is your name written in heaven? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? We went to the ball game last night, the Reds game. It was Star Wars night. It was awesome. And boy, every time the Reds would do something good, man, the people got to their feet and they were shouting and screaming and excited because the guy ran around three little white things and scored a run, you know. But the Bible says in Luke chapter 15 that when one sinner repents there is rejoicing in heaven in the presence of the angels if you're not saved today you will cause a racket in heaven if you come and trust Christ because heaven will joy over that are you saved today is your name written in heaven joy an undaunted tangible real true irrespective of circumstances, happiness that flows from the Holy Spirit of God in a Spirit-led believer. Is that me this morning? Let's stand, please, as our musicians come. Many people would say, Brother Keller, I had joy at one time. I remember the joy that I had in God and living for Jesus, and it's gone. Maybe you've lost your joy this morning because of circumstances. Let me remind you, the Word says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't try to find joy in around. Try to find the joy in. Have you lost your joy because you haven't spent time in His presence? You know, many times we're down and we're depressed and we're, we're hurt. And we're going away from the one thing that can bring us joy, and that's the Lord. Have you spent time with Him? Have you lost your joy because you're not serving others? You know, there's joy in serving Jesus. Are you led by His Spirit, acknowledging Him in all your ways, being in His presence, letting Him love others through you? You'll find joy. If you're here today and you're not saved, and you're not sure you're going to heaven, in just a second, Brother Tim's going to sing. I'm going to stand right down here. I'm going to ask you this morning. This is serious business now. This isn't playing around. I'm going to ask you this morning. If you're not sure that you're going to heaven, would you please just come down that aisle and say, Pastor, I need to know I'm going to heaven. Oh, it'll change your life. <laughs> it'll change your attitude. It'll change your eternity. Would you come and trust Him today? 
Let's do business with God, as Brother Tim said.